The Creation Club quest Blue in the Face begins in Riften at the illustrious Bee and Barb, where a nosy dragonborn can peek into this room right over here and find a sleeping Klexius and then immediately start going through his mail. Here we learn that there are goblins in Riften and that removing their shaman is the recommended course of action. So let's head south of Riften to Grom's Pass. It's a short trip, not very far from here, just right here on the map. A blue god leading a tribe of goblins on Skyrim's border? Potentially Malakath himself? That does not sound good. No, Lucian, that does not sound good. That's why we're going to go throw ourselves into it right now without any hesitation whatsoever. Now, when you first walk in here, you'll see two of these little goblin guys. They're cute, but aggressive. Fortunately, we were able to dispatch them fairly easily. Keep moving forward down the narrow corridor and you'll find the body of Avanessa Caladius in possession of a book titled The Posting of the Hunt. This book describes the ritual of the innocent quarry, also called the Wild Hunt. The creators and times of the rituals are long forgotten, but if followed properly, the right brings great power and prestige to the huntsmen. I gotta know what the Wild Hunt's doing here. Alrighty then. Moving right along down another narrow corridor, we can see another one of those cute goblins standing guard outside of their main chamber. You know, it's too bad it had to end like this for him, but you know, we're in the business of meddling into these types of affairs and he's standing in our way. Now, once inside the main chamber, this is where things get a little bit dicey. We can see their blue god over there establishing his dominance over a couple of his goblin subjects who haven't exactly been greeting us with hospitality. He's wielding a staff that packs a wallop with a bolt of lightning, and frankly, he's a lot bigger than Malin. Fortunately, she's no slouch at the alchemy lab and carries with her an array of powerfully disabling poisons. Not to mention Inigo, who's a well-oiled killing machine. A quick look at this blue god's journal reveals that he's really just an orc from Largishpur who stumbled into the role when he visited Grom's Pass while wearing full blue body paint. The goblins mistook him for their god when they saw his blue skin and he just went with it. He kept applying blue dye in order to continue fooling the tribe, but his cover was nearly blown when the goblin Goff caught him in the act. And for this, the imposter sentenced Goff to death in the fighting pit. Obviously, we must rescue him. Right after we loot this staff. Look at this thing. Isn't it beautiful? It says here it deals a lightning bolt that does 40 points shock damage to health, half that to magicka, and then leaps to another target. How fun! Okay, now let's go get the little guy. Alright, so he's not in here, but we found a chest to loot. Alright, what do we got here? An ebony war axe. Oh, a subscribe. You'll want to pick that up. That's the most powerful weapon in the game. And, of course, a little bit of gold. So all this was just because an orc who couldn't hunt happened to get some mushroom juice on his face? Goblins really are a peculiar lot, aren't they? That one down in the pit sounds all right, though. Should we get him out? Yes, Lucian, that's exactly what we're going to do. Let's get back on track. Okay, we've gone back across to the other side of that main area where all the action was, and now we're just going to wind on down here and rescue this poor little fella. There he is. Oh my, just look at him. He's magnificent. <laughs> hey there, little buddy. Are you all right? Okay, well, obviously we've got a bit of a language barrier. I'm, I'm not sure why there's so many dialogue options here, but, um, okay, tell you what. Why don't you just follow us on out of here and we'll get acquainted later. All right, then. Come on, let's go. 